June 2018, as the whole world looked on, 12 young footballers and their coach were trapped in a cave. For 17 unbearably tense days, the hunt was on to try to find them in an underground labyrinth. An unprecedented rescue operation was set up. Soldiers, divers, and speleologists risked their lives under the close attention of the world's press. We battle against of Mother Nature. Hardly anything was known about the cave. The only cards that we had were dated to 1988. I just know that this is the fourth longest cave in Thailand. As the water levels rose, they had to battle with the elements. It's very close to a, to a suicide mission. Harnessing technology and science, they would attempt the impossible. There is a problem with the water. It can go back to the water. It can go back to the water. It can go back to the water. A high-risk rescue mission. Somebody has died inside. An unbearably tense countdown. We have only six days or more that all the people inside will be alive with that level of oxygen. Il y a vraiment une course contre la montre, contre la mousson qui, qui là tous les météorologues, les, les cartes le disent. Il, il va, il va pleuvoir et on ne sait pas quand ça va s'arrêter. scientists, world experts in cave diving, and the leaders of the rescue operation. You have to find them, even though they are alive or not. From both the darkest depths of the hellish cave and from ground level, we will see how a combination of advanced technology and human courage grappled with nature that had become out of control. Saturday, June 23, 2018. Northern Thailand on the Burmese border. Nestling beside a mountain is the small town of Mai Sai. Well off the beaten tourist track, the area has very dense vegetation and, perched on high, a rather mysterious cave, mostly frequented by locals. This particular day marked the end of the dry season. At 3 p.m., the heavens suddenly opened. And torrential rain began to fall on the region. Nook, a ranger in Tam Luang National Park, had no inkling that something was about to happen that would change her life. รู้ข่าววันที่23มิถุนายนนะคะตอนนั้นประมาณ2ทุ่มกว่าเพิ่งฟิตเนสกลับมาจะมาที่บ้านก็ได้รับจากการแจ้งจากทีมงานบอกว่าตอนนี้ใครมีนักท่องเที่ยวหลงไปในถ้ำ12 members of the local football team aged 11 to 17 along with their 25 year old coach had failed to return home after training details were provided by the relatives of the missing This photo, posted a few hours earlier on the coach's Facebook page, announces their plan for an excursion to the Tamluang Cave. The parents were already there. Later that afternoon, when the children failed to return from the excursion, they went up to the opening of the cave where the youngsters had left their bicycles. คือก็ไปเจอนะคะทั้งกระเป๋ารองเท้าโทรศัพท์มือถือจากรถจักรยานที่จอดอยู่บริเวณหน้าฝาค่ำค่ะ The Rangers began to search the cave, but after only a few minutes, they emerged with some very disturbing news. เพราะว่ายังไงเพราะว่าเราเคยเข้าไปในถ้ำเราจะรู้ลักษณะของถ้ำเป็นยังไงแล้วทีมงานของเราที่เข้าไปบอกว่าน้ำมา it was unusual for the water to rise that way. 
At this time of year, the Tamluang Cave is a popular excursion place for locals and presents no danger. Thierry Faliz has been a journalist in Thailand for over 30 years. He has written several books on the area, a region he knows very well. Alors, il y a un panneau à l'entrée qui dit la grotte est fermée à partir du début juillet parce que c'est la en principe c'est le début de la mousson. In the rainy season from July to November, the cave is closed to the public because the rains swell the underground river. Donc formellement le 23 juin, ben on n'est pas début juillet, donc on peut toujours y aller. La preuve d'ailleurs, c'est que là, elle, elle est ouverte. The entrance to the cave, though, was completely blocked by flood water from the underground river. There was no escaping the facts. The children were stuck in the cave, trapped by water. The parents panicked. How were they going to escape this trap? หลังจากที่ทราบว่ามีลูกศิษย์พลัดหลงอยู่ในถ้ำก็ได้โทรศัพท์ประสานกับคณะครูบุคลากรทั้งหมดทราบถึงสาเหตุที่มาที่ไป11 p.m. the footballers had been missing for seven hours having initially thought they could quickly be found the rangers accepted defeat and alerted the authorities one of my staff she called me uh, on Saturday night, she, she said that uh, Mr. Governor, uh, a student missing in the cave uh, in my, at my side. Narong Sak is governor of Chiang Rai. He quickly assessed the seriousness of the situation. I asked for the rescue team, uh, set up as a team, and try to. Uh, get inside the cave. A team of 20 rescuers from the area immediately went into the cave to look for the missing youths. But not only did they not have the right equipment or any special cave diving skills, no one had any idea of the layout of the Tam Luang cave. I don't have any information. I just know that this is the, the fourth longest cave in Thailand. Tam Luang, ça veut dire la longue grotte, et qui porte bien son nom puisque c'est une grotte qui fait des dizaines de kilomètres de long, donc c'est une des plus longues de, connues de Thailand. Of those 10 kilometers, only the first 800 meters were developed for tourism. Beyond that, the tunnel had never been studied. It was assumed that if the children were alive, the floodwaters had driven them into the unexplored, unmapped section of the cave, one of the longest in Thailand. Les seules cartes dont on disposait, elles dataient de 1988. This is the map drawn up by French speleologists in the late 1980s. Out of 10 kilometers, only six had been studied. More importantly, the map presented a major flaw. The accuracy is the problem. At that time, they, they didn't have any modern technology like uh, the laser link fighter. They just used uh, like a uh, Meter measuring uh, device. They didn't measure the elevation of the cave floor or the ceiling. The only information provided by the map was the shape of the cavity and the composition of the rock. The Tamluang cave is part of a karstic massif and thus porous, formed by millions of years of limestone erosion. At the bottom of the cavity flows a river, formed mainly by rainwater seeping through the mountain cracks, but also from the overflow of water tables. Two things were certain. One was that its single passageway forks into two, one and a half kilometers in. The other was that the cave was very difficult to negotiate. ลักษณะของถ้ำหลวงเนี่ยค่ะจะเป็นทางกว้างแล้วก็แคบ
แล้วก็เป็นทางขึ้นลงแบบนี้ c'est pas juste un couloir comme ça c'est c'est un une succession de de boyaux de de siphons enfin bon de de couloirs très étroits de 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 espèces de petites collines à l'intérieur il y a des rochers à serrer enfin bon il y a toutes sortes d'obstacles naturels c'est assez compliqué It was impossible for the rescuers looking for 12 teenagers and their coach to get through such a labyrinth. If you are not an uh, expert in, in, this, in the cabin uh, experience, you may get lost easily. Blocked by the flood water, the team of local rescuers turned around and emerged at 3 o'clock in the morning, empty-handed and pessimistic. They spent about two and a half hours And they said that uh, it's very really difficult inside the cave because uh, the darkness, uh, the water level, and the temperature of water is very cold. The heavy rain had made the water in the cave rise so high that it now presented an insurmountable barrier for rescuers. <laughs> ต้องดำไปอย่างน้อย5ถึง6เมตรนะฮะเพราะว่าเข้าไปทีก็นี่ก็ทีมใหญ่เลยการเริ่มต้นนี่แสดงว่ารูนะน้ำท่วมไปแล้วท่วมแล้วครับมันเลยปกติท่วมแล้วครับมิดเลยต้องดำไปอย่างน้อย5ถึง6เมตร Might the youngsters still be alive 12 hours after their disappearance? If so, how could they be found in an unmapped system of caves? At this stage, for the authorities, time was a vital factor. Sunday, June 24th, 8 a.m. The children had now been missing for 17 hours. Governor Naronsak decided to call in the best divers in the country, Thailand's military elite. In my perception, I think that the best diver in Thailand is the SEAL team. The SEAL, they train for the, the, the really difficult task. As this promotional clip shows, the Navy SEALs are the Thai Navy's highly trained special forces. Bah, le SEAL, c'est un corps d'élite de la marine, comme il existe dans la plupart des pays sur Terre. Hein. Ce sont des, des, des gens notamment qui sont formés à la, à la plongée euh, en cas de conflit, par exemple. Ce sont des gens qui sont capables d'aller euh, déposer des mines sur des coques de bateau, enfin, des, des choses comme ça, qu'on voit beaucoup dans les films. So if we can bring them from the Navy to the cave, I think that uh, for sure we can die to reach the children. 24 hours after the disappearance of the young footballers, a team of 20 combat divers arrived on site. But no one imagined the nightmare the Marines would face. Because once in the water, the divers were confronted with a major obstacle. They couldn't see a thing. Uh, the darkness and uh, the water is full of mud. You cannot see more than six inch. You cannot see anything. Beyond the visibility, the whole environment of the cave posed problems for the Navy SEALs. Le problème, c'est que les cils, euh, en tout cas les cils thaïlandais, sont formés pour la plongée en eau ouverte. C'est-à-dire qu'ils sont capables euh, de faire des tas d'opérations très sophistiquées dans, dans des lacs, dans, dans, dans la mer, bien sûr. Euh, mais ce sont, on dit eau ouverte, parce que s'il y a un pépin, il y a au moins l'échappatoire, c'est de sortir de l'eau. Donc ils n'ont pas la formation de la plongée spéléologique. Stuck in the bowels of the earth, here in Tam Luang, there was no way for the divers to surface and breathe in the open air. The dangerous nature of the assignment forced the team to turn back. With this latest failure, the chances of finding the missing youngsters began to dwindle. Meanwhile, the news of my size 13 missing footballers began to spread across the country. 
คืนนี้เราเริ่มด้วยความคืบหน้าภารกิจค้นหานักฟุตบอลที่เป็นนักเรียนนะครับและโค้ช13คน The military search operations were now being widely reported by the media. Bai, a cave diving enthusiast, was watching events unfold on his TV. I see in the two Navy SEALs pictures. I see that they they only uh, wearing uh, single tanks uh, with uh, recreational diving equipment gear. Uh, trying to get inside a cave. He immediately noticed a problem with the military divers' equipment. Do whatever they can, but they will run into a problem, or they might die because they not don't have in, um, the right proper equipment or the proper training. Diving in underground caves requires a specific type of equipment, one which is heavy and bulky. ลังจอร์ดีกรดอีดัววาร์ลีอิคิปโม่สเปซิฟิกทุกสิสต์เมดัวดูเบลทุกดัววาร์ดูบุตเตย์ดูเดทันเดอร์ดูมาสก์เคลค์เคลค์ปอบิดบอบินดอลินเดคุตโตเดลัลูมิเอร์สเปซิฟิกกราน์แคปซิตี้สกิทุกเปอร์สเตย์เดซอร์เดซอร์ในคาเฟ Twice as much equipment is needed because it is impossible to go to the surface if anything goes wrong. Above all, divers need to be able to move around confined spaces. Back mounts configuration for scuba diving and can be very dangerous and hard to maneuver because you need to be able to take your equipment out in the restriction area. So uh, we like the system what we call it side mount. Um, side mount system, which is you hanging, uh, attach uh, the tank to your th the side of your body instead carry in, in at the back. Monday, June 25th, 48 hours after the disappearance, the Navy SEALs needed Pai's know-how to overcome the obstacles they faced. The expert speleologist reported for duty and prepared to accompany them underground. To be honest, um, I thought uh, maybe Two or three days, the most we should be able to reach to the to to the boys and be able to get them out. But went in on Tuesday morning. It's my my mindset totally changed. Once inside the cave, what he found there was much worse than he imagined. When they reached chamber three, a thud was heard coming from the bottom of the cave. Water, we can hear sounds like a thunder. Really bad thunderstorm because the water actually flowing into a small tunnel, and when it hit the uh, some of the small chamber, it has the air pocket. Right, we can hear that very clearly uh, inside the third chamber, and we thought, wow, that that's not good. This sound confirmed fears that the water was still rising in the cave. Bangkok's Mineral Resources Department offered an explanation. Among them was geologist Chai Puan, an expert in soil hydrology. On site, he realized that the mountain surrounding the cave was a veritable sponge. There are many, many places that water can. Go into the cave through like a, directly from the rain, from from the top of the mountain. There are many many dry cave sinkhole, and there are many many steam sink there. When the water fall, when the rain come, you cannot see the water flow in in the in the valley, but they just disappear into that one. The upshot was the water was rising inexorably. With the 13 youngsters now missing for three days, the situation seemed more serious than ever. Rescue workers, speleologists, and the Thai Navy divers had all tried and failed to venture into the depths of the cave. On the surface, however, families refused to give up hope. <laughs> At this point, 
a rather crazy idea was suggested. On this third day, in the face of adversity, the governor and his team proposed what seemed like a harebrained plan to rescue the young footballers, an attempt to drain the water from the cave, and they claimed they knew what would be required. Pump. A lot of pump. In an attempt to pump out the water trapping the youngsters, a major logistical operation was launched. The first step was to harness as many water pumps as possible, the type typically used for irrigation purposes. We don't have enough at the time. To bring in as many pumps as possible, the authorities used media outlets to make a nationwide appeal. Ties were quick to show their solidarity. Les pompes à eau sont beaucoup utilisées en Thaïlande, dans les rizières, dans les, les fermes d'élevage de crevettes, de piscicoles, etc. Donc dès le début, il y a des, il y a des gens des, qui se portent volontaires pour euh, apporter leur pompe à eau. Among them was a businessman named Napadol, who drove more than 1,000 kilometers from the Pechaburi region south of Bangkok. Napadol's factory produces light and powerful PVC pumps, the ideal equipment to accomplish this superhuman task in due time. He hoped his machines would drastically lower the water level in the cave. To maximize efficiency, the new water pumps were set up at the top of the mountain, upstream from the torrent crossing the village of Pami. If this torrent could be reduced, the water level in the cave where the 13 youngsters were trapped would drop. Only things did not go according to plan. Several hours later, the rain was still pouring down. There was no escaping the facts. Not only was the water level not falling, it was continuing to rise, and fast. The water between second and third chamber, there's some a lower area as well. I remember on, on Tuesday morning, I was able to walk through that lower area. The water just came up to my, my knee. But Wednesday afternoon, the water came up to here. At that time, we, our, we, we battle against of the mother nature. The monsoon was raging. Water invaded chamber three, momentarily interrupting the team's attempts to push through. The cause seemed lost. But then, new hope for the young footballers emerged in the form of an appeal for divers with extraordinary skills. Wednesday, June 27th, the boys had been missing for four days. Inside the cave, the Navy SEALs, still stuck in Chamber 3, 800 meters from the entrance, set up a base camp. In the opinion of Pei, their technical advisor, the divers could go no further. There was nothing else for it. The military had to seek outside help. They needed divers skilled enough to swim underwater and underground in confined spaces. Only a hundred or so people in the world are up to such a task. Fortunately, some of them were living and working in Thailand. I know people, which is we have a group of the technical divers in Thailand that uh, can lend the knowledge, can you know bring up the equipment, prevent them from into any accident or, or even um, death. Why, you know, why don't we give a hand, right? One such diver was Belgian Ben Remenons, an expert in underground exploration. As a friend of Pais, he had been receiving first-hand briefings on the rescue attempts. When I arrived at the site, it was not a pretty sight. And the Navy SEALs, they guide me in inside the cave, and then I start to realize that this might be not the easiest uh, feat I've ever done. The passageway was difficult to get through. 
Ben and the Navy SEALs accompanying him on the first 800 meters carried heavy loads. We were carrying a lot of uh, cylinders inside uh, to prepare for, for a further push uh, inside the cave. And this part was already the hardest part uh, for me because to get to Camp 3, you had to uh, climb a lot of rocks. And, and I felt that this was already on, on the edge of my physical condition. It took Ben and the Navy SEALs over two hours and 30 minutes to access the base camp in Chamber 3. You have to imagine climbing uh, Mount Everest. Yeah, you don't just walk in and go to the top. You, make, you go to uh, Camp 1, you leave some supplies, some food, come back down, then Camp 2, Camp 3, until you, from the last camp, you try and get to the summit. It was very similar to this part. There's different dry rooms, uh, room 1, room 2, room 3, and the actual longest diving is from Camp 3. I'm already very exhausted coming into Camp 3. Friday, June 29th and 3 a.m. With the youngsters now missing for six days, Ben finally began his dive. Although he had 20 years diving experience, the Belgian was struggling to believe his eyes. As soon as he entered the cave, he faced a torrent of water from the underground river, swollen by days of rain. The water is, is raging like a, like a Colorado river, but brown, brown of mud. The current is so strong, we can hardly progress, and the visibility is literally like uh, cappuccino, like, like cafe latte. His objective was the fork where the passageway splits, 800 meters ahead. But the mission soon turned to disaster, as the diver's equipment broke within minutes. I broke my computer in the first 10 minutes, smashing into a rock. That day I was alone. I had a thin rope uh, with me, and I had no idea where to go. I could not read my compass, I could not read my instruments. That was probably one of my worst dives uh, I've had. Ça a été comparé à une sorte d'énorme lessiveuse, quoi. C'est une, une essoreuse. C'est vraiment ça, l'image qui vient, qui vient à la tête. Il y a un plongeur qui a, des, qui a, qui a, qui a parlé d'apocalypse, quoi, vraiment, pour, pour, pour décrire ça. There was a lot of cable uh, left behind. I got entangled, cut myself free, uh, and in the end, I suddenly find myself stuck between the ceiling and the bottom, uh, fighting a current, which, in a small restriction, that gets smaller and smaller and smaller. He finally managed to edge forward 200 meters and access a small cavity. His strength waning, Ben needed to catch his breath. It's very close to a, to a suicide mission. Discouraged, Ben was faced with a tricky decision. In the back of my mind, I didn't even know if these kids are still alive. So, with a very heavy heart, I, uh, I turned around. I come out and I told, I tell the Navy SEALs, like, listen, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm really sorry, but it, it's, it's too dangerous. Now missing for six days, the chances of survival for the 12 teenagers and their coach seemed remote. Especially as, like Ben, the British cave divers had been forced to turn back. No one had managed to locate the children. It seemed there was only one possible cavity in which they could have sought refuge. But rescuers had to go in blind, not knowing how far they needed to venture to find any potential survivors. The strangers return to the camp base, in the grotte de base, saying it's not possible. The conditions are much too difficult. We don't know if they're living. We, if we continue, there will be deaths among us, among the sauveurs. So they say, well, we have to on doit arrêter l'opération. On the surface, the mood was downbeat. It was now almost a week since the 13 youngsters went missing. Lost in the darkness with no food, their chances of survival were slim. Le moral est vraiment au plus bas parce qu'on se dit même si supposé qu'on les retrouve on ne voit pas comment ils ont pu survivre dans, dans, dans ce genre d'environnement au bout d'une semaine sans nourriture, peut-être sans boisson, sans boire. Donc on voit, on voit 
les, vraiment, les, les hypothèses les plus pessimistes sont, sont envisagées à ce moment-là. Their biggest hope of survival lay in the structure of the cave itself. Damuang is made up of limestone and porous rock, so the water seeping through the walls is drinkable. But would a little water be enough to keep them alive? Nothing could be less certain. Dr. Tosatep is head of the Chiang Rai Region Public Health Department. He arrived on the scene the day after the young footballers went missing. ก็สามารถมีชีวิตอยู่ได้ระยะเวลาหนึ่งและแต่บุคคลนะครับเรื่องของความมั่นใจเนี่ยต้องยอมรับว่าในห่วงเวลานั้นเนี่ยเราก็
Thus, despite the difficult conditions, the divers managed to go further than anyone had previously managed and open the way for the other rescuers. If the children were still alive, they could not be much further away. But exhaustion forced Ben and Maxine to return to base camp, where the British team took over. Then, three hours later, the long-awaited encounter was recorded by the rescue team's camera. Yeah, best you can. Thank you. Hello, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. How, how many of you? They're all alive. Thirteen? Yeah, thirteen. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. The twelve children and their trainer were all alive, huddled on a rocky ledge. Nine days after their disappearance, they had finally been located four and a half kilometers from the entrance to the cave. The British diver, when they uh, uh, get in, out of the water, they saw and they listened and smelled something of the kid. And they, finally, they find the kid. The governor immediately alerted the families. I walked to the parent of the children and said to them that uh, I found your kid. All of them alive and healthy. They were very glad. Somebody kiss and hug. He then addressed the nation. ไม่สามารถยืนคนอย่างคนเดียวได้ซึ่งผมพอดีผมหลีกเลี่ยงจะไม่พูดแต่ทางทางเก่าเหมือนตลอดนะครับเอ่อแต่ยืนยันว่า
แล้วก็เป็นความเครียดของเราตอนนั้นเราคิดอย่างนี้เพราะนั้นณณวันนั้นเนี่ยผมผมก็สบายใจไปอย่างแต่ว่าเกิดความกังวลอีกอย่างว่าเราจะช่วยทั้งหมดได้ยังไง Several solutions were suggested to extricate the youngsters from their living hell. The first option, the one preferred by the families, was to leave the children in the cave until the monsoon ended and water levels began to fall some four months later. This scenario was rejected by the experts. Il n'est pas du tout sûr que pendant les mois de mousson, l'endroit où ils sont va pas être inondé aussi. Il peut très bien que l'eau monte de 3-4 mètres et puis bah, les, les noix. The solution favored by the rescue team was to evacuate the children from the cave by having them dive through the water. But parents were absolutely against it. The Thais are choosing to not focus on the diving the kids out solution. They know that this is potentially the most dangerous solution that we can come up with. It is the one that almost guaranteed will kill or injure people. A worrying physical phenomenon accelerated the decision-making process. ก็พบว่าระดับออกซิเจนเนี่ยมันลดต่ำลงเรื่อยๆนะครับช่วงเวลานั้นเนี่ยจริงๆออกซิเจนเนี่ยมันจะประมาณ 20-21% ออกซิเจนนะระดับออกซิเจนที่ปกติมนุษย์อยู่ได้ช่วงนั้นเนี่ยเหลือแค่10กว่า 11-12 ซึ่งก็แนวโน้มก็คือถ้าต่ำกว่านั้นเนี่ยเด็กอาจจะหมดสติแล้วก็เสียชีวิตได้เพราะว่ามันอยู่ในที่อับแล้วก็คนอยู่เยอะขึ้นก็ใช้ออกซิเจนมากขึ้น We have only six days or more that all the people inside will be alive with that level of oxygen. To raise oxygen levels in the cavern, divers took turns to carry in dozens of oxygen cylinders. It was a high-risk operation that led to a tragedy: the accidental death of diver Saman Kunan. We've been in, we've staged our tanks, and while we're on the way out, we actually meet Saman and and his teammate while they are on the way in. Their function being to walk all the way in, and as we hear and understand it, they're bringing oxygen tanks into where the kids are to try and increase the oxygen level. In the chamber where the kids are. Saman Kunan was a former Navy SEAL who had volunteered to help carry in oxygen cylinders. But during a dive, he slipped and lost the tip of his regulator, the device that allows divers to breathe. The equipment out of his mouth, and he cannot change uh, in the water. Unable to find his regulator in the murky waters, Saman Kunan panicked, losing consciousness a short time later. His diving buddy was unable to revive him, and the 37-year-old drowned. Making countless trips back and forth to the cave in a hostile environment increased the potential risks. News has just hit that he was being pulled out. Um, and that somebody has died inside. He gave his life for us. While the rescue teams mourned their lost comrade, more dark clouds were gathering on the horizon. The huge land will be in Chiang Rai, and uh, it will last for three or four days. Il y a vraiment une course contre la montre, contre la mousson qui, qui là tous les météorologues, les, les cartes le disent, il, il, va, il va pleuvoir et on ne sait pas quand ça va s'arrêter. The death of the rescuer, the return of the rains and the scarcity of breathable air in the cave demanded rapid action to extricate the 13 from their living hell. Despite the high risk nature of the rescue mission, four days after finding the youngsters, a decision was made to ferry them out through the waters. Children were oblivious to the obstacles blocking their way out. Not only could most of them not even swim, they were in poor physical condition. But what rescuers feared above all else was not their weakness. One of the things that we 
uh, the rescuer fear most is the panic on the water. To avoid such a catastrophe, Pai proposed a solution, a full face diving mask. Once you put the full face mask on, you don't need to use your mouth to breathe. You can, uh, you can breathe through your nose regularly, right? Normal scuba equipment, you need to breathe in, uh, breathe out to your mouth, right? And have the separate mask to cover your eyes. But full face mask is actually cover your whole face. It has a nose pocket that actually isolate the air that you can actually breathe through your nose, like a normal breathing. Thus equipped, the children would not need to learn to breathe underwater. The other major obstacle was the duration of the journey through the cave, no less than five hours, with many sections completely underwater. At any moment, a child might become scared, tear off his mask, and drown. To make sure they remain calm, the rescuers decided to take drastic measures. To make absolutely certain that the kids would not panic, they would be injected with a high dose of ketamine anesthetic to put them to sleep. Despite all these precautions, the rescue team regarded their chances of success as being extremely slim. La plupart des plongeurs étrangers sont persuadés qu'ils sortiront pas tout le monde vivant, qu'il y aura deux, trois, quatre, cinq morts. Sur Terre, il n'y a jamais une opération comme ça qui a été faite. Each transfer out is a few hours of swimming in this water through zero visibility water. We can't always check and we can't clear the mask for somebody who is not conscious. On the surface, tensions rose as preparations for the emergency operation got underway. Deep inside the cave, the 13 trapped youngsters wrote letters to their parents as a kind of legacy. Mom and Dad, I love you. My brother, too. If I make it out, bring me some nice, crispy pork. I miss you all. I can't wait to be home again. It's cold, but I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Maybe soon they would be delivered from their stone prison. Sunday, July 8th, two long weeks after the 13 went missing, the rescue operation was finally ready to begin. At 8.30 a.m., after a final briefing, 13 international divers were dispatched into the cave. Half of the first three kilometers were underwater. This was the riskiest part, and it was where Klaus took up position. Our function in there was when the English guys were coming in from Area 9 where the kids were, and we would then receive the kid, take the equipment off them, and then we would do evaluations of them, so if they're breathing, monitor their, their vital signs. Along came the first child, carried by a British diver. The first thing, seeing them is, is kind of weird, and they got all this very, very pale skin, which is not normal on Thai kids, um, especially not the ones that are active and out uh, up in the north. Despite his pallor, the boy was alive. I feel that, okay, yeah, okay, we got a live one. Let's carry on, let's do what we need to do. Let's keep them alive, let's keep them alive, let's carry on. Down went Klaus, carrying the child, attached to his belly, to the divers waiting at the next relay point. Between each submerged section, the sleeping child was deposited on a soft stretcher to make it easier for the divers. And so it went right up to chamber three. From chamber three to the exit, the seals slid the stretcher along the pumping pipes, placed side by side to form a sort of rubber slide. Finally, to prevent the child from falling along the rises and falls, the stretcher was attached to a zip wire with a system of pulleys along a cable stretched between two high points. 
5.40 p.m., and the first of the 13 young footballers was brought out of the cave alive. I, I, I think that I don't feel happy like that before in 10 years. You act like a kid. Uh, high five, hug with each other. That same day, the team managed to free three more children. It took the rescuers another two long days to evacuate the other eight youngsters. Then, on Tuesday, July 10th, at 5.13 p.m., the last child was brought out of the cave. This is what I think is the Mahasajan, because I don't have a child who has a full face mask. We are just very, very happy. It, it, like a world-class uh, rescue in, in, in this moment. After 18 days of torment, it closed the page on an unprecedented catastrophe and a new technical challenge. More than a billion liters of water, the equivalent of 400 Olympic-sized pools, were pumped. But above all, the 13 young footballers from Tam Wang owed their lives to the bravery of men with a broad range of skills coming together in a winning combination. We, we have the, like a world best uh, person, like a diver. We have a strong and brave uh, Navy SEAL, Thai Navy SEAL. And we have a very, uh, like a, a great a volunteer and many, many things. A total of 10,000 volunteers worked to save the children's lives. The Tham Luang case is will be teach us about unity, about unity, about no less, no language, no nationality. It's a mission of humanity. A year later, almost 4,000 tourists flock to Tham Luang every day. Tam Luang will forever bear the scars of a titanic rescue operation and a disaster that spun out of control.